Hey guys, so this is the 100 video for this YouTube channel and I want to cover this very special moment with my very brand new purchase which is this car because like it or not, most of us we are gonna incur this very expensive expenditure at some point in our life Okay, let's get back into the car, it's really hot here now I'm sure that you know a car is a depreciating asset and a vehicle may mean very differently from person to person. Some may look at it as a tool to drive from point A to point B. Some buy it for the safety and convenience for a family. Some buy it purely for the joy of driving and etc. I mean there's no right and wrong, everyone is different so this is very subjective. So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna try my best to give you my perspective from a broader spectrum so that you can make a better decision for your next vehicle purchase. If you ask me buying this SUV at the age of 27, it's a little bit overkill for me. But hey, I kind of wanted a car that I would look forward to drive every single day. Plus, the interior of this car at this price point is kind of a little bit hard to resist. So, I guess I just pulled the trigger. Anyways, it's gonna be a long video but I would rather not skip the details so that you can get a better picture of the entire car buying process. But if you want to skip to relevant section, I will put a timestamp down below for you. So, without further ado, Let's jump back into the studio. Welcome back. So if you are not familiar with the different classifications of a car yet, they can be generally classified into 12 different classes based on their body type, size, and various other features. I know that is a lot, but very broadly, majority of the cars that you can see on Malaysia's road typically come in the A, B, and C segment. Starting from the smallest and least horsepower A segment, we have cars like Perodua Beza, Perodua Axia, Proton Saga, and etc. Followed by arguably the most frequently seen on the road B segment cars such as the king of the road, Perodua Myvi, Proton Persona, and to the slightly larger compact SUV like my Proton X50, Honda HRV, Perodua Arus, Toyota Vios, Honda City, Nissan Almera, and etc. And lastly, in the C segment, you have larger and more powerful vehicles such as the Proton X70, Mazda CX-5, Subaru XV, BMW X Series, Honda Civic, and etc. Any segments other than those I've just mentioned are typically way more expensive and serve a smaller niche of driver, which is why you don't really see as much of them on the road. Now, the reason why I've just listed out the different segments is because as your vehicle gets larger and more powerful starting from the A segment, down to the B and C segments, it all affects the cost of owning the vehicle due to various factors such as the depreciation of the vehicle's value. As simple as it gets, for the more expensive cars, you are gonna depreciate more per year in nominal value, so watch out on that one. Financing costs, the pricier the car, the higher your loan gets, the more interest costs you are gonna end up paying. Thirdly, maintenance costs, larger cars or cars with more components and electronics, you're gonna be spending more money to maintain it because there are more parts to be fixed and be replaced as hardware such as tires, engine components and etc. They all will wear and tear over time, especially with our hot Malaysian climate. Insurance costs, larger vehicle with higher engine capacity, for example a 2.0cc petrol engine, is gonna cost you more insurance premium compared to a 1.3cc engine. Fuel costs, larger or heavier cars, you're gonna end up spending more money for fuel because physics and in my experience jumping from my old 1.3 cc proton saga to my current 1.5 turbo proton x50 i can already feel my petrol cost almost doubled even though i'm driving the same road to office every single day so just take note on this when you are budgeting for your fuel costs and lastly road tax just like insurance cost the higher your engine capacity the more road tax you're gonna pay now two of the most common terms that you're gonna stumble upon when you are shopping for a car are CKD which stands for completely knocked down car and CBU short for completely built up car. CKD cars usually refer to cars that are assembled locally in Malaysia so that they can qualify for the government's incentives and be exempted from the import tax which in turn means cheaper cars for all of us. For example, we have Proton production facility in Shah Alam and Tanjung Malim, Perdua's plant in Rawang, Honda's plant in Malacca, so on and so forth. CBU cars, however, refer to cars that are imported directly from other countries as a fully furnished assembled unit since they are not or yet to be assembled here in Malaysia, which means they don't qualify for government incentives, hence why they typically come with a larger price tag. It's not all bad because some people wanted to buy certain variants of cars that are yet to be manufactured in Malaysia because it can take a few years before a CBU variant turns into a CKD version here. 
sometimes almost never so there is no right or wrong there will always be a product for everyone and in case you are not aware yet ckd cars usually enjoy better tax incentives for example the current sst exemption for new vehicles that has been extended until 30th of june 2022 and as you can see here the ckd cars enjoy 100 percent sst exemption while CBU cars only get to enjoy 50% exemption. So there lies the difference in cost savings for consumers like us. If you wonder why CKD cars enjoy so many more benefits, that's because they are directly creating more jobs which contributes to the country's economy. And on top of that, they allow for technology transfer, import of foreign talents, machineries, and materials. So all in all, it is only fair that our government provide them with better tax incentives to attract foreign car companies to invest in Malaysia. Now, after understanding the difference between CKD versus CBU, we can now touch on arguably the most debated topic, foreign versus local cars. When we talk about local cars, we are referring to Proton and Perodua, which tops the sales chart in Malaysia since they have more budget-friendly options which caters for most Malaysians. However, when we talk about foreign cars, we usually refer to Japanese brands such as Toyota, Honda, Nissan, Mazda, and Mitsubishi. Whereas for continental brands, we have the European brands such as BMW, Mercedes, Audi, Volkswagen, Volvo, and etc. When comparing foreign versus local cars, I would typically look at the following factors. Firstly, price, of course, this will be the largest differentiator. Local brands will be cheaper, but it does have its pros and cons attached to it. Quality of vehicle, this is very subjective because on one end, you have people saying local brands are value for money for the amount of features you are getting, while on the other end, you have people that swear by Japanese brands like Toyota for its ride comfort and vehicle longevity. To each of their own, there is no one hard and fast rule that applies to all of us. So it's better for you to do your own research and ask the driver themselves. And even better, go test drive them yourself. After sales service, this is also very subjective because depending on where you live, the service center's quality and customer support might differ from one to another. But in general, from what I've gathered from my friends and family, Perodua and Toyota comes with a very good after sales service. Availability of spare parts. Foreign cars, especially newer variants, would mean there is a higher risk of not having available or sufficient spare parts should you need them. This can be very troublesome and could make or break your vehicle purchase decision because hey, if your new BMW's aircon is not working and you need to wait 3 months for the spare part to arrive, then what's the point right? That said, local cars, for example the newer Proton X50 and Proton X70 are not immune to this problem as well since they are China's Geely rebatch vehicles. So it's really a hit or miss if you ask me. You are bound to accept certain risks if you were to go for newer variants. Interest rates, since foreign car brands typically come with a more positive connotation in terms of reliability, you are bound to get a lower interest rate quote from your bank. Not by a lot, but just so you know. And lastly, resale value. Foreign cars in general have higher demand in the used vehicle market, so the depreciation of their value is significantly lesser compared to local cars. I know many of you would think that this is a make or break factor, but in my opinion, take this as just one of the six factors because you shouldn't buy a car just by looking at its resale value. There are also many other factors at play as I've just mentioned to you. Now, we talk about the financing plans and budgeting for your new car purchase. Here's an example of how the numbers for my Proton X50 are calculated. You will typically see car dealers advertising the on-the-road price without insurance and for my car, that will be 103000 as highlighted in dark blue. But on top of that, you will need to add on the mandatory insurance which can vary from vehicle to vehicle which brings the on-the-road price to a subtotal of 106000 Now, that 106000 you can of course pay fully in cash to buy it but logically it would be better for you to take up a loan since the interest rates for a car loan is usually very low at about two plus percent per annum for most people with a good credit history plus it is fixed throughout the entire tenor so you are not really losing out a lot in terms of interest costs feel free to check out this video if you want to learn more about the mechanism of interest rates so to finance the vehicle purchase you will need to take up a higher purchase loan which basically means asking a bank to buy the car for you since you don't want to fork out the entire sum on the first day for that you can finance up to 90 percent of the vehicle's cost since you need to put at least 10 percent of the vehicle's cost as down payment on the first day 
pay. So in that case, I am financing 95,000 through Maybank and I will need to pay the remaining 10% on day one, which is about 11,000 ringgit. And speaking of car loan, it is usually offered in the form of one, three, five, seven or nine years tenor. And of course, the longer the tenor, your monthly installment will be lesser since you stretch the payment over a longer period of time. But two things to keep in mind. One, most if not all new cars come with a 5 years warranty and after that you are taking additional risk of the vehicle failing which would cost you a lot of money to repair or replace and not to forget the resale value will also reduce drastically since there's no more warranty and two the longer the loan tenor you choose the higher the interest rate will be which consequently adds up to the total interest cost of owning that vehicle so as a general thumb rule i would say five years is the sweet spot since you are not taking any warranty warranty risk and not too much interest rate but if you know how to optimize your cash flow wisely then you can also go for seven years which is what i did for my higher purchase loan i would say nine years is a bit of a stretch so try not to go there unless you really need to also before i move on if you are looking to size your budget for your vehicle purchase I would say it's best to fit a monthly installment plan using a 5-year term as a benchmark that does not exceed 10% of your gross monthly income. But if you really need to stretch it out because that car is a necessity to help you commute to work or whatever, then 20% is the most I would recommend. Anything more than that, you are adding too much stress to your finances. Now, to the car purchase process, there are many ways you can do that, be it by physically visiting a showroom or look for a sales agent that you or your friend may know. That said, to facilitate your entire car purchasing process because it involves quite a little bit of procedures, it would be best to look for a sales agent that is responsive and eager to complete the deal with you. And for that, what better way to continue this segment by introducing you to my sales agent. And this is Mr. Fu. He is my sales agent from Proton 4S Kampung Melayu Subang, which is where I bought my X50 and I can vouch to you. This guy has been very helpful in my entire car buying process. So Mr. Fu, thank you very much for your time today. Can you share with our audience what is the typical process of buying a car like? Hi, I'm Fu. First, I will help you to explain the car model and then the features. After that, we'll offer you for test drive. After that, I will help you break down loan amount. And then at the same time, I will help you to get your IC, license, payslip, and bank statement three months. After that, bank will call you for sign loan agreement. And then we're waiting the stock. After I get the stock, the engine number and chassis number, I will help you to break down your deposit. After you pay the deposit, the car will arrive my showroom. Once the stock arrive my showroom, I will call you to come collect the car. Once you check the car, everything is okay, perfect, then you sign the delivery order. That's all. So there you go guys, the entire car purchasing process is as simple as ABC. I will leave Mr. Fu's contact over here as well as in the description box below. So feel free to contact him. And Mr. Fu, thank you very much for the time today. Thank you. All right. Wrapping up, before you purchase your car, it's best to consider all the factors mentioned in this video such as understanding your needs and wants, the price you are paying, the financing plan you are committing yourself into, vehicle reliability, spare part availability, maintenance costs, fuel consumptions, insurance costs and so many more, all of which contributes to the overall cost of owning your vehicle and dare I say, the amount of headaches that you may also go through for the next couple of years. I hope you found some value from this video and if you did, a little thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm will be very helpful. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, stay invested and as usual, I will see you in the next one.